When someone calls out to God in wrath, shaking their fist toward heaven for some perceived slight or injustice at the hand of the Almighty. Well, why did God put me in this situation where I would be so tempted to do this sort of thing? To call upon God, it's an act of faith in every single context. And even when someone calls out to God in wrath, shaking their fist toward heaven for some perceived slight or injustice at the hand of the Almighty, even that, in a way, is an act of faith that God is in fact real and is present in the heavens, if nowhere else, and is active in the world to do Him the injury that He supposes. Some people do that. They call out to God. They call out on the name of the Lord all right. Like right when they smack their thumb with a hammer. Now, they've just been trained to do that. And they've been trained by the world to do that. It's not right. It's blasphemy. It's irreverence. It is something that is part of the dark speech of the unsaved. That should not be a part of our lives. Amen? The Bible even says, no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And it's that same Spirit that's involved in there. One that calls Jesus accursed is not speaking by the Spirit of God. One who takes the Lord's name in vain is not speaking by the Spirit of God. One who just flings the name of Jesus or the name of God or whatever, flings it around in a blasphemous, casual, irreverent fashion, they are not speaking by the Spirit of God. Okay? And then that goes into a few other directions too because all those things are interconnected. I don't want to get into that tonight because that's not what the message is. Amen? So he said, we, where we're saying that to call upon God in any way really is a kind of an act of faith. And this, of course, is not at all as man perceives. God is good. Amen? And He's good all the time. The Bible says by the mouth of the Apostle James that God cannot be tempted with evil and neither tempts He any man with evil. Amen. Well, why did God, why did God, well, can I just have fun with this? It's Sunday night, all right? Well, I'll have fun any night, but you know what I mean, all right? Well, why did God put me in this situation where I would be so tempted to do this sort of thing? Did it ever occur to you that, one, maybe you put you in that situation because of an unwise decision or, or, or something that otherwise wasn't pleasing to God or you were pursuing something that wasn't godly or wasn't the will of God for your life? Maybe you put yourself there through a, through a lack of wisdom or even through some kind of a lust in your thinking and now you find yourself confronted with the temptation oh don't go there pastor don't 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 do it don't say it don't you know you're not going to yes I am well I just wanted to look up this one little thing on the internet I didn't think it would take me all the way over into this other stuff you actually did You just silenced that alarm in your spirit. Oh, man, people, we can be so complicit in our own self-deception, can't we? Oh, that's right down there in the personal section, Pastor. Come on now. Have some mercy on us tonight. It ain't about me. We're just saying. And so people call upon God, and many times they do, but they're angry. God, why did you take my mother with that cancer? Well, hold on now. Was it God that took your mother? And I could talk about this very specifically. Was it God that took your mother with that cancer? Or did your mother give herself that cancer by smoking like a forest fire for 45 years or more of her life? Was it God that took your dad with cirrhosis of the liver? Or did he drink himself to that? It's about accountability where that's concerned. We call upon God and want to lay blame at his feet. But then something good comes by our life. And then we don't want to give him the praise and the glory and the honor for that. How messed up is that? That we want to give him blame for the bad when it's not his. And then we don't want to give him praise for the good when it is his. Hallelujah. Oh, it's alive tonight. Praise the Lord. So it's not really the way that these people perceive it. Her perception will grant his reality to the mind that perceives it. We mentioned this about 
calling upon God in wrath because of something in the Bible very close to the beginning of the human race. In the early generations of mankind, after Adam and Eve were made, or, uh, well, they were, in fact, made, not born. Um, after Adam and Eve were made, and then after they sinned and they fell, and God put them from the garden, and then they began to finally bring some children into the world. Why do people delay on that, I wonder? Whatever is different reasons, whatever. And so they'd had Cain and they'd had Abel by then, and then they grew up to be strapping young men or whatever they were. And then Cain did what he did. He murdered his brother Abel all through a stupid sense of bitterness and injury that he perceived at the hand of God. And because you can't punch God, he hit the only person that he could and killed his brother for that. So after that, well, then there was another man born whose name was Seth, right? Eve gave birth to another son sometime after that whose name name was Seth and it says in Genesis 4 26 that to Seth to him also there was born a son and he called his name Enos then began men to call upon the name of the Lord that's ver that verse has always stood out to me for decades uh, reading that it stood out to me then began men to call upon the name of the Lord and for some reason and I can't really tell why it's uh, that verse has stirred some controversy like, what's controversial about it? It says what it says. They began to call upon the name of the Lord. But it doesn't give us the context that they began to call upon Him. And so it's possible that around that time, this is now three, um, if you want to count Adam and Eve as the first generation made directly by God, you know, they, uh, Seth is the third, gen no, Seth is the second generation. The men he's talking about here are the uh, third generation Second from the garden, third generation of humanity is when they get around to calling out to God. It's almost as though, and this is speculation, okay, it's almost as though it took that long for the seriousness of their plight to really hit them. Hey, wait a second. It's really kind of tough out here. It's really hard out here. There's this thing called seasons, and they're trying to kill us. It's hot in the summer and humid, and it's freezing cold and snowing in the winter. I mean, I don't know what all they faced. It's not like the earth was quite covered yet with people. It's only three generations in. And so it's like it just started to hit them. We need help. We need help just to survive. We need help just to, to get by. Uh, we've already seen one murder. Uh, Grandpa Cain killed Grandpa Abel before they could even be grandpas, I guess. It was history to them by then. And so, and we're starting to see this sort of thing repeated. And as I said, it's a little bit of speculation tonight, but I don't think it's off the mark. This was fallen humanity, was it not? And they were no good at it. Because everybody was new, everything was new, and it was already infected and spoiled by sin. And so here it says they began calling on the name of the Lord in that generation. And I like to think that some of them were calling on God for help. But I also believe that a lot of them were calling on God out of anger. You threw us out of paradise. Yeah. Do we remember why? You ever get mad at your mom and dad because they judged you for something you did wrong? Oh, that's like everybody here. Amen. That's shooting fish in a barrel, all of us, and shooting myself while we're at it. Because that's what we were when we were children of wrath, lost in sin, and so on. And so they began to call on him. Seems to me, though, either way, that calling on him was calling on him. And whether it was in praise or in wrath, men that lived during that generation that followed Seth began to call on his name in one way or another. And that kind of tells me that things at that point were not yet complete as hopeless as they would be in the generations that would follow them. Some of you remember a lot of the big picture timeline stuff we've been talking about in the Bible study from the creation of man to the fall to the flood and how horrible things were that necessitated that that flood even be sent to destroy the old world and how just as bad as things were then they're going to get that way again in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. All of this has happened before. 
And it is all happening again. It was prophesied, and we'll leave that there. The question is this. Do we call upon the name of the Lord? It's not just a history lesson tonight and a lesson in speculative theology and in human motives and psychology and all of that. Do we actively call upon the name of the Lord for ourselves and for others? Or, or do we ever even call, a, or, or rather, do we call upon the name of the Lord or do we call upon everything else? 